Hey there, my name is Rodrigo, and in this video course, I'm going to take you through the journey of exploring protocols in Python. The objective of this course is for you to understand the point of protocols. Why do you even need them? You will learn to create custom protocols in Python so that you can use them in your own code. You will build generic protocols for increased flexibility. You're going to learn about what members your protocols can have because you can also make some decisions there. And you will use inheritance with protocols to see how to create hierarchies of protocols. Now, this is not a beginner video course, so there are some prerequisites. To make the most out of this course, I need you to make sure you are comfortable with OOP, inheritance, type hints, and with using static type checkers like MyPy, PyWrite, or another one if you use another static type checker. And in case you need a refresher on static type checkers, in this course, the demonstrations will be done using MyPy. If you're comfortable with it, you can use any other static type checker, as long as it supports protocols. And in case you want to use the same type checker as the one used for the demos, go ahead and make sure you have MyPy installed. And if you need a refresher, there's a guide on static type checking with MyPy that you can check out just to make sure you're up to speed. And as soon as you have that set up, we will dive right into protocols. The very first thing you need is to make sure you understand protocols. If you understand what they are useful for, you will have no difficulty in actually using them in your code. So this is really the hardest lesson in all of the course. So let's dive right into it. The first thing you need to make sure you understand is that using inheritance from object-oriented programming creates a hierarchy of classes. You have a parent class and then some child classes and then maybe some child classes of those first level child classes. And so if you keep going down the inheritance tree, you are building a hierarchy where each children has access to the methods and the attributes of the parent class. And protocols are actually orthogonal to this hierarchy. The point of protocols is to define sets of behaviors that many different classes might exhibit and that are not necessarily tied to this hierarchy. Which is all very abstract. Let's show you an example, a concrete example. Imagine you're building a very complex simulation of ecosystems in planet Earth. And right now you're trying to model the animal kingdom. And you might think, well, you'll define a class animal that is going to be the parent class for all species of animals that there exist. And then you might think of creating child classes for mammals and fish and birds and others. And you take this idea from biology because biology does this. You can classify animals as mammals, fish, birds, etc. So you think this is a good idea. And then you might think, all right, for mammals, I will define methods that allow mammals to walk and to run. And fish will know how to dive and to swim. And birds will know how to take off and fly and land. And so you're associating methods related to movement to each of these three classes, which will in turn have different animal species as subclasses. And this might look like a good idea, but as soon as you start thinking about concrete animal species, everything breaks off. For example, a whale is a mammal, so it should go under mammal in your hierarchy. However, whales cannot walk and they cannot run. And the flying fish is a fish, but it can also fly. But it doesn't make sense to put the flying fish under birth. And if you think about penguins and ostriches, those are birds, but those cannot fly. They can walk and they can kind of run and penguins can dive and swim, but they definitely cannot fly. So you can see that these movement behaviors, they're not really necessarily tied to your hierarchy, or maybe you thought they were, but that doesn't really work very well. So what you need to do is you need to take a step back. You can still use this hierarchy, this is still fine, it's just that the movements, the behaviors that you wanted to describe, they do not go directly on the hierarchy. Because again, if you think about it, different species exhibit different behaviors. Sharks can swim, and they're a fish, that's fine, but flying fish, they can both swim and fly. And bats can both walk and fly. And penguins 
they're birds and they can walk and swim, but they definitely cannot fly. So these colorings on each of the species that are related to the behaviors, this is what the protocols are for. The protocols define the behaviors that you care about. They're not baked into the hierarchy directly because they span across the full tree and so much so that you could even think about having planes and submarines because planes they can also take off and fly and land so they might be seen as flyers and submarines can also dive and swim so those could also be seen as swimmers and this is how protocols are related to duck typing you might have heard if it quacks like a duck and if it walks like a duck it must be a duck and this is exactly what we have here when we think about whales and sharks and flying fish and penguins and submarines, what we say is, if it dives like a swimmer and if it swims like a swimmer, it must be a swimmer. It doesn't matter if it's an animal, a mammal, fish, bird, or if it's a submarine, something that is man-made. So this is the idea of protocols. It's to isolate useful behaviors from your class hierarchy. If you understand this, then you're good to go. After understanding what protocols are useful for and what's the point, really, the next step is knowing how to create custom protocols in Python. And a protocol really is just a class that inherits from typing.protocol, where typing is the module from the standard library. So you define a class that inherits from protocol, and in that class you define a series of methods that represent this behavior that the other classes must implement. For example, for our walkers it was walk and run, and for our swimmers it was dive and swim. So this is all there is to it. To create your first couple of protocols, what you can do is, from typing, you can import protocol, and now you will define the classes that inherit from this protocol that you imported. For example, to create a class for the walker protocol, what you do is you say class walker, you put a protocol inside the parentheses because you want to inherit from protocol, and then you will define the methods that you require. And when you do so, you need to type the full signature of the method with the parameters and their type hints and the return value type to make sure you tell Python and static type checkers how those methods should look like when used. And for example, for walk, let's just say that walk accepts a destination string with the name of wherever we are walking towards, and the method returns nothing. Once you have the signature, you can just put an ellipsis there because you don't have to say anything about the code. What you really want is just to prescribe the signature of the method. And you do the same thing for the method run. Let's say there's also a destination string and there's no code under it. And this defines the protocol. And just for the sake of exercising, pause the video and do the same thing for the swimmer protocol. All right, I'm assuming you gave it a go. It's similar. You create a class swimmer that inherits from protocol. And now you need to define a method dive. Now you couldn't have guessed, but let's say that dive accepts the depth the object is diving to, and it also returns none. And for the method swim, it's also going to accept a string destination. So this you have in front of you is the code for two different protocols. So you've created custom protocols, but if this feels underwhelming, it's because you haven't used them yet. And that's what you will learn in the next lesson.